Okay, we've let this swing set a few minutes longer now and it's dulled off real nice all the way around. So we're gonna go ahead and put the second coat on. We're gonna go around the edges just like we did the first time. And when we rotate the wing up, we're gonna rotate the nozzle 90 degrees because this is gonna be the, the uh, second coat of the cross coat. So we're gonna put this coat on 90 degrees to the way that we put the first one on. So this time, the spray gun will be going vertically instead of horizontal. Okay, that's got the wing primed. We're gonna let that sit. We'll come back tomorrow morning and we'll scotch bright it off, we'll blow it off, and we'll put the insignia white on it. When you're through spraying, take what's left in the spray gun and just put it back in the paint container because it's it's a one part material, so you don't have any that uh, that you're gonna waste. So we'll just pour it right back in there. And we'll open the fluid control valve almost all the way out and pull the trigger and that'll let the paint that's up in this uh, ca uh, cavity drain back out and you don't have to waste the paint. And then for cleanup you can use a bucket with some water in it or in this case we have a sink it makes it real nice because it, it just cleans right up with water. So let's go to the sink. We'll use uh, kind of lukewarm water. It doesn't have to be cold or hot. It doesn't matter. I like it about lukewarm. And then with the water running, I just pull the, pull the trigger and let it flush through and just unscrew it as I go. I use a little scotch bright pad. There's a little bit of a uh, buildup right inside that kind of dries a little bit from the air, it'll just clean right out. And there's the hopper, that's all nice and clean. Then on the gun itself, I like to pull the cap off, make sure that the paint down inside of the, the cap is all nice and cleaned off, the needle port, then use a wrench, pull the trigger, use a a wrench and un uh, unscrew the nozzle. And flush that out and then flush the part through. That little bit of, uh, uh, of a lot of water going through it really floods that needle and just cleans it right up. And as you can see, there it is. It's all nice and clean. We've got a little bit right there yet. A little brush that we use. It's a little wire brush. will go down inside if there's a, a chance that there's a little buildup in there. Just take a little brush and just wipe that out. And that's, and that's it. This gun's clean and ready for the next time. We primed the wing and it's nice and dry now. And it's set for 24 hours so the primer is nice and cured out and we're going to be able to sand it. Now that on this particular wing, we gave it a cross coat of the, uh, of the um, primer sealer of the smoke gray. And we're going to talk about two things that you can do when you primer. We showed the, the uh, one cross coat or the two coats. But at the same time, we want to uh, point out that on some certain cases, you can give a wing just a single coat. This wing has a lot of rivets and things that is your sanding that you could sand down through and expose the aluminum. And if that happens, you need to be certain that you go back and you re-prime that area. You do not want any bare spots because they'll show through on your finish. The first coat that we put on this wing yesterday was very smooth and we could have gotten by with that. And we decided to go ahead and do the second coat based upon the amount of rivets that are on here. So that's kind of a judgment that I wanted to explain that you can do it either way. Now on this wing, we're going to show two methods of preparing it for the top coat. We're going to use sandpaper and we're going to use Scotch-Brite. 
if you, if you uh, apply the primer sealer and it comes out with a little bit of roughness to it, you're going to have to sand. Uh, in this case, the primer went on very smooth. There's, uh, uh, there's no orange peel in it, and so a Scotch-Prite uh, works very well on that. So I want to explain, uh, first of all, the sandpaper. And this is a 3M. It's a 320 grit open coat, and that's very important that it's an open coat type sandpaper and it will clearly stay right on the back that it's an open coat. And what that means is the way that the, uh, the grit is bonded to the paper and this particular paper will not plug up with our uh, primer. If you use a closed coat type or a wet or dry it will plug the paper and you will not like how it sands. The other thing that we're going to use is a this is the maroon scotch bright that works very well and so we cut this into four pieces and so that works that works really nice so we're going to start out with the uh, sandpaper and then we're going to go on to the scotch bright there's one other thing that's very important on this on this wing or any of your other parts on your aircraft that once it's primered you need to be very careful on how you handle this we don't want to touch it with bare hands uh, for sure, as after you eat a meal or whatever, wash your hands because if you do touch it, oils on your skin can cause a problem down the road. Um, what we're going to do is wear the nitro gloves, and it does two things. It keeps the sandpaper off. Some people have sensitive skin, but the nitro gloves will keep you from touching that finish. And as soon as this is uh, uh, sanded, we're going to blow it off. We're going to put it in the spray room. And then we're going, to, we're going to go ahead and uh, in just a little bit, we're going to be putting the Insignia white top coat on this wing. So right now, we're going to demonstrate how we're going to sand it. We're going to start out using the 320 open coat sandpaper. And we're just going to do a small area just to give, give you an idea of uh, what to do and what not to do while you're sanding. The main thing is to stay at away from the head of the rivets. The sandpaper will go right through the primer and instantly expose those rivets. So what we're going to do is start and we're going to sand in between the rivets and not even go over the top of them at all. This primer is very smooth and it's taking very little to uh, um, sand this. The main thing is that we want to be certain that there's no little specks of dust or anything on it. That's the main thing. And also, the uh, little bit of sanding gives the top coat really a good tooth to grip to when we put it down. And priming, primer needs to be sanded regardless. It's a, a practice that we have uh, always taught and we believe that it's a good paint job always is pre-sanded prior to putting the top coat. The next step that we want to show you is with the Scotch-Brite. And I like it much better. So if you'll take your time when you apply your primer, be sure that it goes on very smooth without any ripple effect or orange peel in it. If it does that, then you can use the Scotch-Brite and it's much faster to sand off than it is using the sandpaper. If you're using a sandpaper, you're going to eventually, you're going to get some rivets, uh, sand the top off and be sure that you go back and touch them up. With the Scotch-Brite, that just nearly doesn't happen. So let's go ahead and, and uh, do an area now with the Scotch-Brite. You don't have to be near as careful over the rivet heads because it just won't knock it through, it knock the tops off of them. So you'll be able to see here in just a minute how much easier it is to sand with a Scotch-Brite as opposed to the sandpaper. There you can get an idea of what that's supposed to look like when it's sanded. It just doles it right out. There's a little bit around the rivets, but that's, that's really a nice sand job right there. It's very smooth. 